Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to put together one of these tailored frames from Tonic Studios. I, if you caught my last crafty haul video um, with um, the Wednesday deal from April, I think 14th, uh, I mentioned that I bought this bundle because I have a specific project in mind, but I'm still um, deciding on a few things, so I'm not quite ready to make my actual project yet. But as a first step, I wanted to make a sample of each of these frames so that I could decide which one I want to use between the two. And I wanted to do this video and get it up there because if you do have this die set, or you're thinking about getting it, I had a hard time finding other tutorial videos on how to put one of these together. In fact, there aren't even too many tutorial videos on how to put together the other type of uh, tailored frames that Tonic Studios also has. This set of two has the beveled edge. So I've already put together this one here and it looks like this. It's got some nice embossed wood green detail and the bevel is is right here you can see it's um it's flat at the front and then it has sort of a bevel um into the center and then you could back this you know with a piece of um a chipboard or or even just heavyweight cardstock and, and put a photo in there um i just wanted to make the frame as a starting point so that i could see how the shape of it and size of it differs from um, the other one which is the one i'll make in this video both of these die sets pretty much works the same and um let me show you the die it's really just one big die and an optional embossing plate um, that goes right into this section right here. And that is what gives you that wood grain texture. That's totally optional. So if you don't want that wood grain effect, then um, you can always just take this embossing plate out. Um, I like it. So I like that little extra touch of detail. So what I've done is I just really went to town on the um, painter's tape here to make sure that that plate is um, uh, nicely spaced within that gap and that it's taped down to the dies so that as you're running it through your die cutting machine, it doesn't uh, skip or jump or anything to where it may overlap with your die and um, potentially damage your die. So. One of the unique factors of this die set, and the reason why I chose it over other um, sort of shadow box making dies, is that the size of your frame is completely up to you. So you can do a square frame, you can do a rectangular frame like I showed here. And what's amazing with this is that on this one edge here, you might have noticed that there are these little markings it almost looks like a ruler and in fact it kind of is because it's actually marking in both inches and centimeters so that you can actually cut this uh when you've run you know your paper through and die cut your paper you actually have markings on your paper and you, then you can cut it off to the size that you want and so this goes from two inches to 10 inches is the 10 inch mark is the last uh, little uh, tick mark, but the die actually extends maybe another quarter inch beyond that. So that measurement will give you the, the outside measurement here. So let's see if you can still see it. Um, you can't really see it on, on my uh, assembled one, but I cut the outside edge to six inches and um you can't see the tick marks just because of how it's assembled this covers it up but um but you can see that that whatever this measurement is just keep in mind that the the actual inside measurement is going to be smaller um so you'll just have to bear that in mind in terms of um, the size photo that you're going to be able to fit on the inside or, you know, artwork, whatever it is you're framing, because certainly you can frame a multitude of things. Um, so that's really, I think, 
unique because most of the other die sets that I I found when I started looking for um, kind of shadow box frames, it, it's it was really specific to a certain size and or shape. So it was either, you know, a square frame or a rectangular, but in very specific sizes. This, however, I love the fact that I can customize it and make whatever size I want. So um, how I do that, just so that I can be a little bit more efficient with my paper use, is instead, especially if I'm not making the full you know, maximum size frame, what I do is I, um, let's say for this box, I wanted an eight inch square frame. So I just lined up my paper just kind of just past the eight inch mark. Cause if I'm going to cut this off anyways, then I don't actually need to die cut that out of my paper. I'll just go past the eight a little bit and then um, kind of push it over to the sides as much as I can <laughs> and then I'll run run this through and once I've done that then um, you get something like this and then what I'll do is take this to my trimmer and I'll just make sure to trim off this edge so that it's nice and square because sometimes you line up a die it actually might not end up being square so um, to ensure that it is and that everything is the size that I want it to be, especially if you're doing um, one thing to be um, mindful of is if you're doing a rectangular one, the two opposite side pieces, you want to make sure those are the exact same length. And then these two, you want to make sure are the exact same length. That way your corners are going to all <laughs> Um, square up with each other so that's that's an important step um, to to make sure that you uh, do so let me go ahead and do that with this piece and I'll be right back okay so now I've got all four of my pieces trimmed down and if you were making a rectangular um, frame I recommend the two sides that match just give yourself a little label. So I'm I'm making a square one, but I did it anyways just so that you can um, get the idea because the two that are on opposite sides of each other, you know, I would label this A and A and label that one B and B. That way when you go to put this together, at least for me, it just helps um, keep everything uh, straight, especially if, if the two sizes are are not significantly different in length so that um, you're sure that you're gonna attach them in the correct order. It'll become fairly obvious once you <laughs> once you get it together but you just want to go in um, knowing that you're not gonna make any mistakes. So now that we have this all cut trimmed um, you could, if you wanted, actually just stepping back a sec, after you die cut it, you could run this through a second time, but with your embossing pad to give this e even more of a deep embossing. But um, I didn't do that for, for these panels because they're just kind of a test for me, but or sample. But you could definitely do that. Um, now I'm going to start to fold on my score lines and this is where uh, when I read the directions it was a little bit um, reverse from how I normally think of things. So if you're looking pretty side facing you, um, everything is basically going to be a mount mountain fold. So you're going to fold uh, these little score lines, you're going to bring them up towards you and burnish so you get a nice crisp fold. So you'll go do all of that until you get to these two panels towards the end here. They have a little cross hatch embossing on both uh, the entire length of both panels. The score line in between the two panels that is going to be a valley fold 
and that will be your only valley fold. Everything else is going to be a mountain fold. And when I fold, what I like to do is, I since we know this is a straight edge down here, I like to just line this up so that it's straight. And that way um, you know that you're folding nice square straight lines. So we'll just go ahead and do that on all of the folds. These frames actually come together pretty quickly. The first one, the rectangular one that I showed, I used Centura Pearl paper from Crafter's Companion and it did it did crack on me a little bit. Um, here I'm just using my regular um, 80 pound white cardstock as a sample, but I'm going to try this with Craft Perfect, some specialty paper. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of a test before I die cut just to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't crack on me. Um, I guess I could always uh, score these lines uh, on my scoreboard just to help prevent the cracking because sometimes when a die scores it doesn't really give you a very deep score line and so going back in with an actual um, on an actual scoreboard can can really help uh, reduce cracking so I might I might try that we'll see okay so I've got everything scored and my one valley and the rest are all mountain folds so now um, it's time to apply a little bit of adhesive but let me first show you what it looks like when you have it glued together. So if we look at the cross section here, there's a piece right here that's sort of a structural piece. It's it's there to, to keep this from collapsing inwards. So there's a little bit of um, a um, like a support beam almost. So so that is what this is right here where we put our valley fold this is our support beam right here and you can see that the support beam as i'm calling it it meets up with um this the inside kind of front edge it's like right where this fold is so that's where we want to put, um, and this was, it took me a while to figure this out um, because it does say in the instructions to put a line of double-sided adhesive tape, um, but the way that it looked in the illustrations to me was that it was um, like within the panel, but I actually have been doing it so that I put the double-sided adhesive um, right on the score line because we want the your the support beam to actually adhere to that double-sided adhesive so what i'm going to do is i'll just kind of dry fit this so that you can kind of see that's that's where your support beam is going to land so we want to put our double-sided adhesive right in this um on this fold line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some double-sided adhesive and I'm not I'm going right right over right over that score line and um, you can kind of gauge how far you need to go based on where your support beam ends. So there we go. Okay, so let's burnish that. Now we can start um, gluing everything together. So I like to use a liquid adhesive because if you want this to last, um, even though once it's together it's not going to move <laughs> there's not it's not like a mini album where it's got pages that are going to move back and forth but um liquid adhesive is going to be the most 
kind of permanent adhesive you can use. So uh, you don't want anything to kind of come apart either on you over time. So dry adhesive, especially I think if it's hum like if you live in a humid climate, it may it may dry up, it may start coming apart on you. So um, I've never really had that happen. I've just read that that could be the case. Um, liquid adhesive though, that's not going to be an issue because it's um, it's going to soak into your paper fibers and create a very permanent permanent bond. Okay, so then we've glued together our support beam. I burnished it very aggressively. We really want that to have a good, good stick. Um, and this is Lineco pH neutral PVA glue. It's a uh, pretty low water content, so it's not gonna warp paper. And um, the other property of being pretty low in water content is that it's fairly quick grabbing too. So, um, even though that's not completely dry, we can still work with it and move on to the next step. So I'm going to peel off my double, the paper liner on my double-sided adhesive. And I'm actually, again, just for the permanency of everything, I'm going to put some liquid adhesive just right in that fold at the, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of that length. Um, the Using the dry adhesive is nice because it gives you a quick grab. Using a combination of dry and liquid means I'll get the permanency of a liquid, but I'll get the quick grab of, a, um, of the dry adhesive. And what's uh, the nice part about the quick grab is that we do want this to, it's really only gonna adhere like at the point of, you know, the edge of that support beam. So I want it to grab a little bit, but I still want a little bit of um, wiggle room that the liquid adhesive will give me initially and the permanency that the liquid ad adhesive will give long term. So once that's there, you know, where our support beam is, that's our support beam. On the underside, the two panels on either side of your support beam, you can go ahead and put adhesive along that entire, both entire uh, stretch of those both panels. And then you can fold now the piece that has your ruler markings. You can fold that over and glue that panel right down on there and then I just kind of do that just to get it down but my bone folder will fit in here so um, at least on the wider side so I'm gonna and this one's nice because it's um, it's flat it's uh, kind of squared off at, at the one end so I can really just slide it in and push it down and um, burnish that glue. On the more narrow side, I do have this, bone, this is a proper bone, bone folder, whereas this is a Teflon um, one. So this I generally like, the Teflon one, because it won't leave markings, but this still has its uses um, because it's a little bit, it's a little bit thinner. So I can actually get it on the other side and just kind of wiggle it a little bit and this is really narrow here so I'm kind of wiggle a little bit and if your support be moved at all because we did have some liquid adhesive you can still kind of position that back in place and I just like to push down a little bit just to make sure we've got a good stick there so that is our um, frame. So once you have, you'll end up with four of these and then we can start um, putting them together. So I already have two of them together here um, and I'll show you how to attach one into the next. So here we have 
an A piece, so I want to make sure that um, this B piece is going into my A piece. This is B, so A is going to go here. So that's how it's going to eventually sit. Now, um, the way you want to do this is you want to have one end is going to be completely sort of flush. There's not going to be you know, anything going on here. And then the other end, it's going to have this mitered edge. And on the back, there's going to be this little extra panel here. And then there's going to be a little tab here. So you want opposite ends to fit into one another. So the part that's squared off, nothing going on, nice and flush, that's going to sit inside the piece that has the mitered front. And I'll do a dry fit just so that you can see how they'll fit into each other like that. So where do you put your glue? Um, again, I'm going to use some liquid adhesive. On the outside of the little tab piece, I'm going to put some glue. And then on this extra panel here, I'm going to put some glue, especially um, along the outside edge. And then right on the underside of this part right here, the top of your frame, along the edge, I'm going to put some glue there too. And we'll push that down a little. So now what I like to do is I like to slide my straight piece in so it'll just smear some of that glue. And then slide, make sure your tab is also tucked into the piece next to it. So once you have those pieces together, you can just make sure everything is fitting nice and flush. These should be flush with each other and you can push down. I like to do that as a way of burnishing. There's a little bit of glue here, remember, so if you push it on on that, that will kind of give a good seal there. Um, I think I'm going to start putting a little bit of glue here too. In fact, it's probably not too late. I'll put a little glue there and push that down. Okay. And now we've come to our um, last piece, which is a little bit tougher because we've got to set two edges in. Um, and so for that reason, I like to put glue on both of them at the same time and um, try to wiggle wiggle them into each other at the same time. So same, same thing in terms of where we're putting our glue. So outside of the little tab, on the um, the little extra panel here. Get the edges really well. And then on the underside of this miter, I'm going to go ahead and put along both edges. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So outside of the tab, the panel. And then under the top facing piece. Okay, so remember straight, straight end slides into the other end. So I'm gonna tuck that a little bit. So I'm gonna slide that in a little bit and that in. Then at the same time on this side, I'm gonna slide this in and slide that in. And then once you get them both started, then you can push them all the way in until they are flush. It's the last piece that's kind of the most challenging to get since you have to work with both segments, but it's very doable.
And that's our that's pretty much our frame complete. I'm just gonna hold it here for a little bit just for the glue to grab. But um but there you have it. So there's our frame. You can see that the the corners come together really, really well. Um and I think that's because you have one that's totally straight and then there's only one that has the angle. So you, you're not matching up two angles. You're just laying that perfect mitered edge over a straight edge. So I think, you know, that, that really helps to, to make everything look nice and crisp and perfect. Now, one of the things I'm noticing as a difference between the two frames is that, um, well, first off, there's the size of the bevel. So on the my square one here, the bevel is wider, which is something I could tell straight away from the photos. But um, what wasn't as obvious to me was that the, the mitered portion is where the wood grain uh, embossing detail is. Whereas on this one, where your miter edge is more narrow, um, the embossing wood grain embossing detail is on the top, the flat side, which makes more sense because, you know, this is wider than the miter, so you're going to appreciate that extra detail more so than if um, it was the reverse. And then, you know, conversely, this one, the mitered edge is more uh, prominent, it's the wider section, and as compared to this top part here. So... Um, it's a, it's just a different look. If you're if you're using the that embossed detail, it just might be something to note. Um, but they're both super pretty. So let's see. This started out eight inches in terms of the outside measurement. So you can see here. Um, I think I trimmed it just beyond eight inches. So I'm like eight and one eighth. And then in terms of what that gives you on the inside, it's about five and three eighths. So an eight, roughly eight inch outside um, dimension will give you five and three eighths interior dimension. So. Um, so this can frame maybe, you know, a five by seven or a photo if there if I was gonna mat it and crop it a little bit. Um, but yeah, really really fun. And I saw some really um, interesting photos in the product description where um, I think some of the design team members even kind of nested multiple frames um, because you can make them whatever size, right? So once you know this interior frame, you could create another frame that's five and three eighths on as an outside measurement and you can set that inside here and you can do kind of a nested frame look. I kind of wish I had the straight edge version too uh, so that I could mix and match between the two, but um, I rather like the, the beveled edge of um, this bundle. So I think ultimately I'll probably get more use out of this because it just looks like a little bit more fancy and special. So, um, so that's how you put one of these together. Hopefully that, um, is useful to you if, if you have this set or if you were thinking about getting it. Um, I still have a, a very specific project in mind to do. So when I, um, have figured out what all I'm doing for that project, I will definitely, um, share a video of it and I will try to update this video so that you can actually see what all of this is um, leading to. Um, until then, have a fantastic day and happy crafting. Bye!